and welcome back to a new little series that I thought would be fun to do before we get into any new games or map styles or whatnot for our Tuesday and Thursday slot. Um, it was one of the things that was requested, um, or given, not requested, but given as an idea, and one of the things I've had in my mind for a bit, which is creating a, doing a, <laughs> creating a, doing a, let's play, uh, let's build a mini CTM series. So, I think that is what we are going to do. Um, the series is going to go over pretty much all of the aspects of building a mini CTM, getting a lot of feedback and ideas from you guys. Um, to note before we get into things, just because I know people are going to have questions or be worried about it, I do not plan to place any loot, for the most part, loot or spawners on screen. This is all things that I think, and any pretty much most traps won't be on screen. Um, that way, you know, even though you watch the series, you'll still be able to have surprises when it comes to playing the map, and you won't sure be be you won't know everything about the map. So I figure the best thing to do um, is to come back because I want to do another um, themed a, a mob themed map, uh, much like we had with Iraq Apocalypse. I think it has a, a very distinct style that not really many people do. Um, I think this is, Iraq Apocalypse is one of the only of its kind, as far as I know, that has um, specific mob themed and only those mobs. Uh, so I think we're gonna do another mob themed map. And because of that, I think exploring through Iraq Apocalypse and seeing what went well, what, what was good, what I didn't like, and, um, we can go from there. So this one's probably be a shorter episode as we kind of explore through and see, get an idea of what there is for, uh, what there was in the map. So Iraq Apocalypse, for those of you who haven't played it or didn't watch the devcom of it, Iraq Apocalypse was a mob themed map. It was, uh, very, it was the way it was set up. It was, there's no natural spawns. Only spawns come from spawners, which is how it becomes, or uh, spawners and in this case, <laughs> uh, spawners and silverfish blocks. Uh, so the only mobs, only way for mobs to come out is through these and the spawners. So that because of that, we allow for it allows for very uh, specific mobs only. Now, this does have some upsides and downsides, and we'll talk about it as we explore through. Uh, let's take a just a gander at some of the starting loot. Uh, around the spawn area um, this is my starting love chest and it's mostly similar um, but with the two mini maps I made the starting love chest was had a very similar feel to it um, we have an assortment of starting food so the player isn't worried about that we have torches starting gear um, in this case we have two sets of starting gear uh, I think into a nightmare had one set maybe there might have been two, but I know it was one set. And then we have some starting weapons. Um, all of these weapons are Bane weapons, and they have different vari different varying um, durability. So the, le the least durability item has the most um, Bane on it. The second one has the second least, so it has four Bane and one unbreaking. And the, the best one has three Bane and two unbreaking. So I try to... Um, give a bit of decision making as to what you're going to use and that was kind of the big thing with the starting love chest that I I really liked and I think will carry over into our next CTM when we start it um, also for the most part I enjoyed creating gear that had different properties to it through um, through its enchantments and through its attributes so you know this chest plate is protection one with knockback resistance well, this one's protection with max health. Same with this. Pro protection 1 with 15% speed and protection 2. So it gives that sense of decision making of what would you rather more of. More protection or a little bit less protection. Some speed. More protection or a little bit less protection and knockback resistance. So there's this diversity of items with the exceptions of the helmet. I couldn't think of what I wanted to do at the time for that. This is the diversity of items that, you know, it gives the player a the choices and decisions of what they want to do. Um, so that's one of the big things I liked about this Iraq Apocalypse, that 
carried over for the most part into into a nightmare and i'll carry over into any future maps that i do um we also had a our spawn platform this is something that was not in into a nightmare but is in fractured realms um and something i like to have inside the spawn thing um the spawn area along with the hidden chest everyone loves the hidden chest underneath the spawn um so much like with um into a nightmare we have two um long we have a long sword and a short sword that is um tailored to the map and into a nightmare we had um adventurer short sword and adventurer's long sword in this map we have skittering short sword and skittering long sword and mostly the stats are pretty comparable on uh, between the two maps um this is another thing i like having it's a very um another thing with the map is very um thematic items as well skittering being related to spiders and also um what's funner than exploring around and finding treasures so it's another aspect that i uh, had in this map i didn't quite do it as well as i would have liked um i mean the spawn area and a couple other places had some good hidden uh treasures but a majority of the hidden treasures were kind of afterthoughts of well i need this but i don't know where to put it so i'll put it in um some spot that's not exactly the easiest to find and i'll try to find some of them if i can remember where they are um so this was a spawning area of a rack apocalypse um very um if i were to go back and remake this it would definitely be better than this um the whole i like to preface rack apocalypse with the whole map itself with the exception of some traps um the loot placement and the spawner placement and a smidgen of the areas we're all done on live stream so i got a lot of feedback in relation to um you know the block variation that we would use for the map and the area designs and whatnot so that was why how it was created we essentially just created a rectangle as our initial starting thing played around with block variation and then realized that the room was too rectangular and we wanted to not make it so so we kind of blobbed up the corners which it doesn't really do much for making it not look rectangular still at least down here it doesn't look too rectangular once you look up it does but let's get into it and look around the map a little bit uh, so i gave the player a bit of starting wood here to do with anything what they need if they want to make picks they want to make swords they want to make workbenches and tools and whatnot um i gave the player the option to be able to do so uh, since if they don't find that uh, pick over there they're forced to make their own picks um, now as i was saying the area mobs where the spawners were all set up or the, the map rather was set up in a way that there was no natural spawns and it was all spawner spawns now this has a few implications that can either be good or bad um, the good aspect of it is that we control what mobs the player fights and how many the how many the player fights um, when you're playing a normal ctm natural spawns can be vicious at times um, in areas where you don't have enough honey pots um, so it kind of takes it removes the uh the inconsistencies of uh mob natural uh, natural mob spawns in areas however it does cause this bit of a sense of spawner spam and it's tricky it's tricky um i think for arachnopocalypse for the most part i think it worked well um it did provide a challenge and i did it was one of the big things that i wanted for the map was more of a combat based challenge versus kind of a um combat and exploration based challenge versus kind of hoping to uh I'm not sure what the... A survival-based challenge, maybe. Like, uh, build houses, build farm resources and whatnot. Um, I tried to provide a good amount of loot uh, around the map, including coal, including food, weapons. So, that worked for the most part, I would say. Um, and at least when it came to single-player, I think it worked really well. When it came to multiplayer, it was a bit trickier. Um, 
Now, one thing, there was a lot of people that were a bit confused on furry. Um, they weren't sure if it was related to uh, something with furries or whatnot. Um, furry was in relation to the furs on the spiders. Um, and the coal has a bunch of fur on it kind of thing. Um, okay, so the next thing about the map was a variety of mob types. That was one of the things I like, tried to do to spice up the map is having mobs of different varieties um, that have different aspects to them. So we see we have a Foul Aranea right here. Um, if we kill the Foul Aranea, which <laughs> coincidentally it dropped quite a bit of what it had, um, the Foul Aranea has four items on it, I believe. Um, let's see if I can find... A glass, coal, wood, there it is, and cobblestone. So, one of the big things that I wanted to do with this map is that a lot of the... It... The... the, the what's the best way to describe it? The map itself provides you with the resources that you need as you're playing versus having to uh, farm resources or go hunting for resources. So, as you're playing, you gain the resources that you need. Falernaeus were more of the... Um, resource-based mob, they had a chance to drop four items, um, all of which were a 25% chance, I think, so it could drop one log, um, which is the tangled bark, four furry coal, two broken glass, or three broken stone bits, enough to make a cobblestone pick, um, or for, for killing a few, you can have enough to um, make furnaces and whatnot, so that was the big thing. Is I wanted a variety of mobs, and I wanted the mobs to have important loot on them, so you're um, kind of interested in killing them. So Foul Aranea's had this chance. I can't break stuff with a view. Foul Aranea's had the chance to drop resource important resources, and there's enough of them around in general that you can kill them and get the resources you need. Uh, the next important one was the Titan Spider. This guy was a spider that. No, I don't think I saw anyone that realized it. There may have been one or two that realized it. The Titan Spiders actually did no damage. They had knockback, but they couldn't actually hurt you. Um, but the nice thing about the Titan Spider is it guaranteed drops um, a bunch of Tangled Bark and Skittering Hide with a fake furry enchant on it, just to, for cuteness on that. So as you can see, these, these uh, named mobs, not only do they have... Um, important use as they are provide the base materials for the player um, but it also kind of gets the player wanting to hunt them out saving their spawners and killing them and another big thing with that is that because of these named mobs that provide you with loot um, it's as long as you don't break their spawners you have a means of recuperating if you lose everything um, so foul Aranea, you can farm them to get your wood your coal your glass, your cobblestone. You can kill titan spiders for more wood and more leather, which leads to gear. Um, and we'll talk about the other mobs as we're going through, but that was kind of the, one of the big things with the mobs that I wanted to accomplish is the sense of wanting to kill them uh, because they provide important loot and having them be useful. Uh, so all of the named mobs in the map um, do provide loot um, or have a chance to provide loot, which is one of the big things that I really liked about the map. And I think we'll carry over to our next map that we make um, for this Let's Build a Mini CTM. Um, the next part of the map that I think was one of the better aspects of the map was the trading system. Now, because we don't have this traditional sense of having to farm all your resources, you don't have to go chopping down trees, you don't have to go co digging cobblestone for 10-15 minutes, um, you don't have to farm food. Um, you get this abundance of items that, as you're playing. I mean, you kill spiders, you get spider eyes, you get uh, you break cobwebs, you get string. Um, you get this leather, you get these stone bits, glass, um, the coal I don't do is for anything, and then the tangled bark. So you're getting these abundance of items that you're killing, getting as you're playing through the areas, and it's a matter of what can we do with these items? I mean, it could just stockpile in your chest, but we could do more with these items where, you know, the players far, potentially farming these items or getting these items as they go. 
Um, let's make it easier on the player and be able to use those items. And that's why we have our trading system. Uh, the trading system takes these drops that we get from mobs and stuff. So we take these broken stone bits and sticks because there's some skeletons in the map. And we can make arrows. We take these tangled barks and we can make swords. Um, and then the raid spider fangs to make swords. And powered crystals and the swords to make stronger swords. So... We have these sense of trades with items that we could collect as we're playing. Um, we could take the spider eyes and create ourselves loaves of bread. We take the string, we can make wheat to turn into loaves of bread. We can use these glass bits to make glass bottles and fill with water from over there. Using another drop from a mob, spasmodic venom sack, to create potions. So all of these items that we're collecting as we're playing, not necessarily looting from chests, but as we're playing, we could turn into other items that we want when we want. We can take these leather drops we get from the Titan Spider, and we can turn them into um, enchanted gear. We can take, which is the rest. The cost of these are double what the normal cost is. So instead of five leather to make a hat, it's ten leather to make a protection two hat. Sixteen to make a protection two chest play, protection two pants, and that. Um, and then these are those to make the rare epic items of the map. Um, which is one thing that a lot of people complained about with the epic items is the thorns on them. Uh, the thorns was a very intentional addition to them so that you couldn't use them for the whole map. I wanted them to be um, good for a spurt of the map uh, and something you saved up for. Now, maybe the map was a bit too short to really ever buy these in surplus, but they were there for that. But, oh, I'm sorry. Um, all of these traders are taking resources that the player is gaining as they're playing. And then it's, they're being able to use them to buy new things or trade in for new things. And that kind of removes the need to have all of these um, redundant, repetitive activities of farming wheat or farm doing some type of food farm. Um, making grinders, which you don't have to do in this map. You can if you, if you want specific resources. Um, but you don't have to, um, because that was the biggest thing with this map is I don't didn't want the player to be forced to farm for what they needed. You don't need to farm for food. You can kill mobs and get the resources you need to make food. You don't have to farm for resources or the, you know, your coal or your building blocks. Which the building blocks was a bit of an issue. Um, I don't I didn't provide enough building blocks in the map, um, so a lot of times players would have to mine for their own building blocks which i think if we uh in our next map we'll probably provide a better source of building blocks um, or just have more chest around that contain building blocks for the player um okay so if i remember correctly we had yeah right here we had this was one loot hidden loot chest that we had around that had some of these rage spider fangs some spasmodic venom sacks broken glass coal cobblestone um one that i don't remember ever seeing anyone find um again stuff like this um was a afterthought i think and definitely think for our mini ctm we'll have to put more thought into making places that are more obvious for the other uh, player so let's see what do we have here uh when it comes to gameplay mechanics we'll have to figure out what we want to do along with what type of areas we want to do um if we do a void based area like we had with the uh, um, this area, the murder bridge. Um, the one thing I really liked about this map is I made it so the player was not required to bring their own gear. Um, they could uh, use the gear that I provided to, in order to complete the area because with the game, the gameplay mechanic of this, these. Let's see if I can game. Oh. I, I, have to open up to land. Um, game mode survival. As you can see, um, this is one mechanic that could get broken sometimes when people were playing. Um, but the gameplay mechanic behind this area was that when you get hit by the poison, the poison gets removed and in turn makes you super fast. Um, meaning that if you're not careful, you can get thrusted off into the void. Um, so that was one of those areas where the mechanics I wanted to 
provide the player with stone swords and picks. Um, it might be something in our next map, the one we're going to be making for this, where we might do something similar for void-based areas. I'm not sure. I guess it'll be one of those things we'll have to see. Um, overall, this area, um, what I didn't like, what I did like about it was it was, um, you know, it had this really cool look to it. Um, the problem is once you got running around in there, you got it was easy to get lost and not know where you were or where you needed to go. Um, so, one of those things where we'd probably be better off making a more um, intuitive layout where you can explore the different areas and not get lost so easily. Um, I mean, because you got it's 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 a spiraling mess overall, which worked well for the area, but it was easy to get lost and there was not the the entrance wasn't as um, obvious as it could have been. I tried to put the torches here to make this entrance um, kind of stand out. Um, now that worked prior to us adding in the sand, the red red stained sand, and the clay, hardened clay. Um, originally, the map was built in 1.6, um, so we didn't have this hardened clay and red uh, red sand, so that stood out a lot better. But once we transitioned to 1.7.2, uh, adding the red sand and the red stained clay made things a bit trickier to find the entrance. And one thing I don't think really anyone noticed with the map is that all of the areas were color themed to what the wool color was for the map. So this was the red wool. We have a very red feel to the map, the, uh, the area, you know. The sun, the sun fog we have up here uh, is red. We have this reddish color around us. So this is the red area. If we head over to um, Spiral Complex, that's the green wool. It has a very green feel to it because of all the vines. Um, and if we head into Frosty Nightmare, which is a cold, icy area, um, we have the blue wool. <laughs> so one of those little things that I don't think really... At least that I saw anyone saw uh, figured out, but that was the not only where the the map a themed map the areas were themed based off their color wool. Um, all right, so that I think that's a lot of the what I could think of. Let's see, let's head into the spiral complex and take a look in there and see if we can think of any things I did and didn't like. Um, this was the third wool, the last wool. Um, I did mark uh, one thing I liked about this um, to help the players know what areas is the best order. Um, I mean, we could have put a chest with a book in it that let the player know what area it was, but I did this little, little pattern on the top line and bottom line of it where we have our number in the middle. And as you can see, the number donates what area is what what's the correct order for the area so that the player isn't going into an area that's much more difficult than they have the means to do um spiral complex was the third area and obviously the most difficult um this one was a bit tricky of an area to play um because of all the spawners and how flat of an area it was um and these silverfish i could have i think the silverfish Probably could have used some tweaking. Um, it was easy to get a get killed because of the silverfish. And although the silverfish were adjusted um, to have one HP, so you could hit them with your fist and kill them, um, they could easily swarm you and put you into a bad place. Oh, speaking of that, I did a lot of modification of the the, the different attributes of the mobs based off of their difficulty. The easier the mob was, um, you know. You know, it might have had a regular health. I think the Foul Aranea had regular health. Uh, the Titan Spire was meant as a defensive mob. Um, so because I increased its HP so much, I lowered down its attack to zero. Um, so it's really tanky and has no health, or it does no damage. These crystal, uh, crystal, crystalline Lapisma, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, it spawns in really big packs. It's kind of a pack spawner. Um, more meant for swarming. They have increased movement speed. Um, so because of that, we lowered their HP down to 1 to make them much easier to kill. Um, 
rage spiders, which we saw in the hallway, the flaming demon spiders from hell. Um, they have a really strong hit. They have their poison bite. They also have a flame weapon, which is their... Um, I that's really it wasn't out in the hall it was in the other area but they have a uh, their rage spider fang has uh, um, has a not flame fire fire aspect on it which lights you on fire so you're getting hit by poison and fi fire so because of that I reduced their HP so I was very conscious as to what the mob did for damage in relation to what type of health they needed or if they had any potion modifications what type of um, other counterbalances that I wanted to do. So for our map that we're making, we'll have to keep in mind counterbalances for mobs. We can't just add, you know, add some armor and, you know, if we make a more difficult mob, we don't want to just add armor and weapons onto them. And, you know, if that's how we make it more difficult. We want to have different mechanics to them. So, you know, we might make a mob that's really strong but and really fast, but it's got to be easy to kill in order to not you know destroy the player and, and make it feel unfun and unfair so this is some of the things we'll have to keep in mind when we're designing um, that and because of these spawners that's another big problem with the spawners is that it's very easy to get a lot of mobs spawning into an area and make things really difficult uh, not many people took advantage of the fact that these mo that mobs despawn um, so, you know, a lot of easy way to deal with something like all of those mobs in the area is to simply just go back to base, trade in some stuff, do what you need to do, come back to the area, and all the mobs are gone. Um, now, I've been thinking of a new system in order to do some of this. Well, I wasn't really that far away, but you get, you, really it was just leaving the area and coming back later. Um, that would get rid of a lot of the mobs um let's see chest i think chest looting a uh, loot chest could have been a little bit more abundant and a little bit more planned out so that you're getting loot that you need for the particular areas let's see there was quite a bit of exploration elements to the map where the player could come out here and explore a bit and find some you know new sets of armor some new swords um, but it wasn't really enforced, not enforced, it wasn't really um, as well put together, I think. That was definitely something I want to have. Yeah, see, this is one of those chests that, like, not many people found. Some diamonds, some pesticides, some potions. So I think I want, for our map that we make, I want exploration to be a bigger part of the map where the player has a reasoning to go explore as they can find some really good stuff. I ah, hear some of the rage spiders. Little demons. So these guys have reduced health. Um, a little bit reduced health. They guarantee you drop these two rage spider fangs, which has sharpness of fire aspect, which allows you to trade those in for um, better things. You could also use the iron to make gear. So all of these name mobs drop useful items or have a chance to drop useful items. Um, Titan Spider cara uh, Carapace, plus three Skittering Longsword, Pesticide. So, you know, you the player could go exploring in this map, but there wasn't really a whole need, a whole reason behind it, or, you know, a want for going to explore, uh, just because it was, you didn't really need to. So we'll have to keep that in mind as well. Uh, let's investigate over into the Frosty Nightmare real quick. And I think that will be a good time to call it. Uh, Frosty Nightmare was the second wool of the map. It also led over to the... Um, also led over to the monument. Our wool monument. Our monument, monumental victory monument. Um, the area overall wasn't that big. It was actually a pretty small area. Um, you can see... If I remember correctly, you could see, I tried to make it so you could see all the places you needed to go from one place. Um, or right from the entrance. Um, no, that tree is in the way. Um, that was one of the things I tried to do with this map, is made it, making it so you could see all the places you need to go from the front. We have one here, we have one here. And there's one right back there, but it looks like... The tree, that tree right there is in the way. So that was something we should have removed. 
Um, it felt big when you're playing it, which I really liked. How, even with how small of a size the map is, it's probably because a lot of it was dealing with spawners and lighting up and trying to kill all the silverfish. Um, let's see. So went knowing down into the the, um, the areas, they all had their own unique um, aspects to the tunnels. Uh, one little ruins led down to a tunnel area that led over to the monument. One led over to um, the other two led over to areas that had loot in them. They were kind of loot offshoots. Um, this right here is more of the thing, kind of trap that I want to be able to set up in a map like this. It's one of those things that not really many people n caught, and if they caught, they still got hit by it anyways. So this was the Rocky and XP Blaster. Um, and I'm thinking more traps, not exactly like this, but more traps akin to this where you got caught because you made a mistake. Um, you look at it normally, it's a bottle of enchanting um, XP blaster. If you managed to break in, which a lot of people did, they caught on to the fact that there was eggs that got led into here. And so if you turned it on, it was going to blast it. So a lot of people caught that. However, almost no one figured out that there was this, although this trap could be disabled, well, let's say, uh, let's simply remove these. This trap was not disabled by just doing that. Because, and even flipping the switch off doesn't doesn't turn it off. Um, we set this up as a two-phased two, um, two spawner. So, this got pulled out due to this line, which was went through the wall here. So one of those traps, a two-tiered trap as I like to call it, um, one of those things that I want to probably, if a possible, implement into our map that we're making is these two-tiered traps where they're fun. <laughs> it's not necessarily devastating to get hit by them. You'll die, but that's, you know, it's funny to get hit by them. It's it's not a, a punishment kind of thing. And as for the... Uh, Secrets and stuff stuff like this is what I would want to set more up more secrets up like this where if the player is observant They're gonna find the secrets not so much the player randomly looked in a spot that wasn't That you know didn't seem out of place and they found something But I think that is the gist of what I wanted to talk about with um Iraqed Apocalypse for ideas of things that we could do or to keep in mind when we're building our map. Um, now, with that said, the first task I pose you guys with is what mob theme do we want to go with? Do we want to make another spider theme map? Um, or, rack, or arthropod theme map, which would be Return to Iraqed Apocalypse? Um, or do we want to go for a different type of mob? Maybe a zombie or a skeleton or creepers? Uh, creepers are going to be a bit um, a little bit less flexible of a mob versus um, the rest of the mobs. Um, but skeletons and zombie theme map, or even just an undead theme map, or, or ideas. Um, but I'd like to get a poll from you guys as to what theme do we want to build. Whether it's another spider theme map, or maybe a zombie theme map, or maybe a skeleton theme map. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below as to what you think, and uh, next episode we'll uh, get started on the idea theory crafting of what we want to do with the map. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for joining. Hopefully you'll enjoy this series as we adventure off into creating ourselves a mini CTM in Let's, cr let's Build a Mini CTM. Thanks for joining, everyone. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.